I'm going to talk about something which isn't in any way related to what I've done. Um, and this is all to do with what happened to my youngest son, who at the age of four was diagnosed with a brain tumour, uh, medulloblastoma. And mercifully he's, he's alive, he's well, he's cured. Um, and that's all down to the guys at Adam Brooks Hospital and, and their colleagues in Norwich who did a fantastic job. But the cure is almost as bad as the disease. You know, I saw that little boy, first he went through um, a very traumatic 10 hour operation. Um, he then underwent uh, radiotherapy and he then went through 18 months of chemotherapy. And, you know, it was very much the case that if, if the disease doesn't get you, the cure will. And it does an enormous amount of damage. And although he's now totally cured from an oncology point of view, it has left its, its traces. Now, I'd say full marks to the team at Adam Brooks. I have enormous respect for them. Uh, and they did, you know, they had did absolutely the best they could. But I'm sure that in 30, 40, 50 years time, people will look back on this era and think about, it. gosh, is that how we had to treat cancer? It's almost medieval. It's real butchery. And I, I look forward to the time when there will be much better ways of treating it. As a father, obviously, it was, an incredible, it was the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to me. But as a scientist, I was very curious. OK, oncology is, is just not my field. I've never worked in it. I know very little about it. But I sort of understood what they were doing. I, I didn't know the fine details of the biochemistry, but I understood the rate equations and the fact that one was trying to knock out one sort of cells, you know, in favour of another. Um, but the question I kept asking, and, and bless his soul, the, uh, James Nicholson, the lead consultant at Annenbrooks, I kept saying to him, why? How does it happen? What is it? And he gave me a list of reasons and I said, so you don't know? And he said, yeah, basically we don't know. He said, we don't even know if he was born with it and it suddenly grew or whether, you know, at the age of four it suddenly started. We don't even know that. And that's, that's the sort of answer, that's the sort of problem that I'd like to see addressed. And in another way, it actually relates to... Um, a bit of research that I did because we were working on rapid detection of bacteria and it would be awfully nice if one could take a sample put it in a machine and bingo there's the answer well Paul Ted had a Hickman line which is a line straight into his um, artery just above the heart to deliver the chemotherapy and this this damn thing kept getting infected and the number of times we we had to rush him into hospital and they take swabs and they go away and culture them and eventually it would come back and it was usually a streptococcus or something and then they'd know which drug to give him. How much better it would have been if we could have said straight away, put in a, a you know a meter, press a button, streptococcus, right, give him the drug straight away. So that those are the sort of improvements I'd like mm. to see. And the other thing it relates to is is actually a film when I was filming Cell City. Um, we filmed an interview with Martin Raff. University College and he said if I have my time again I will want to research the brain he said it is the last great unknown frontier and all those things have sort of come together